In this video, we are going to build Instagram from scratch and in the process, learn HTML and CSS. This is your pathway in order to become a front end developer or even better, a full stack developer. We'll also be leveraging ChatGPT in order to help you learn and code much faster. But the problem is I don't know much about code and I'm not a coder, which is why I have Siddhant with me. Hi. I'm Siddhant. I'm the founding member of 100x Engineers and also one of the instructors at the AI accelerated full stack cohort. I sold my last two companies to One Academy and also given a few tech talks at IBM and React India. And my name is Sridev and I'm also one of the founding members of 100x Engineers and you've probably seen me in videos like this or this. So Sid, tell me one thing. Is this video for someone who has no experience whatsoever with HTML and CSS? Yes, exactly. So a complete noob can learn this and build their own UI of Instagram. That's what you're saying. Exactly. Awesome. Let's get into it. Quick disclaimer, since I have no coding background, I'm going to be asking a bunch of dumb questions, which means I'm going to get into your shoes. If you are someone who has little or no experience in HTML and CSS, I'll try asking the questions that you might want to ask so that we get the best out of Siddhant and we get the best out of learning HTML and CSS through this video. All right, Sid, let's build an Instagram UI. What do we need for it? So as we are building this for web and every web is built using these three technologies called HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. What can you tell me what each of them do in one line? Think of HTML as a skeleton where okay. you define the structure of your website. Okay. So I basically define what boxes are there and exactly. what menu should be there and all that. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So once the structure is done, then you add some clothes to it, which is your CSS. So that's like styling. That's, that's styling, fashion, right? Making it look good. Got it. And at the end, we need to make it interactive. So like whenever you're typing something, it should interact with you. Can you give me an example of what you mean by it should interact with you? So for example, when you go to Google search, mm -hmm. you write a query, say, what's the score of match today? Okay. Moment you press enter, Google will send this information to its server and give the response back to you. This is okay. the interaction. So now the web app is interacting based on the query which you have asked. Got it. So it's a lot of functionality. Yeah, it's a functionality. Got it. So in short, HTML for skeleton, CSS for styling and JavaScript for functionality. Cool. So what's the plan? How do we actually get started? It's I, I seem, I mean, where do we get started if you want to build an Instagram app clone? Since we are teaching HTML and CSS in this video, we'll be covering the following topics. So first we need to set up the environment. Mm -hmm. Once the coding environment is done, we can start writing HTML. So we'll cover the basics of HTML. Then we go in how you can write production ready HTML code. Mm -hmm. And then we'll talk about the structure, how you can structurize your HTML code and any piece of content on the internet. And right after that, we'll add some styling to it and we'll start writing our CSS. We learn about CSS box model, Chrome Dev tools, layouts, and much more. So before we begin, we need two things. One, a web browser. Second, a code editor. A web browser is used to display a web application as we are building web, web app. And a code editor is used to write code so that whatever you're writing in this code editor, you can display in the web browser. Both of the tools which we are using here are free of cost and okay. freely available. I'll share the link of these tools in the description box. So once you install both of these, okay. we are ready to start our coding journey. Awesome. Let's start by creating a folder. So let's call this Instagram awesome. UI and uh, then open your VS code. So there's a shortcut here. If you drag and drop your folder, which you have just created to your VS code, it will directly open this folder here. So this is your coding environment. Here I can start creating files. The first file which I want to create is called index.html. Okay. And the, so this is the main file yeah. where everything is going. Yeah. And this is the main file where we'll be writing code. The .html extension will tell your computer that this is a web page, not a regular text file. Okay. So just to give you an example, so think of HTML as you giving instructions to your computer. We'll start from the very basic instruction. Okay. Say we want to create a button. Okay. How will you do that? So there is a special language which uh, we need to use here because computers can't understand English language. Uh, hence there are uh, languages called high level languages and HTML is one of the language uh, which we will use to talk to computers. Got it. So. This is the syntax uh, language of the code of yeah. HTML. So you start with angle brackets and write button and then close the angle bracket. And by default, if you are using VS code with me, it will automatically complete the sentence. 
So now, as you can see, it has already written the closing tag. So every closing tag should have a forward slash. And every closing, yeah. And every closing tag uh, has a forward slash. And this is how you identify which one is the opening tag and which one is the closing tag. Got it. Now, between these opening and closing tags, whatever you write is called your content. So, so in this, this the text that's yeah, going to come in that element. Exactly. So this is your content. So one, once you save this and uh, go live, this is how you can... Oh, so I can click on this. Yeah. But nothing will happen because I haven't written anything. Yeah, nothing will happen. But this is basically your first instruction you have written uh, to computer. Got it. So we've created our first element in HTML. And it was honestly simpler than I thought it would be. It's just one line of code. But how do we get from something like this to an entire Instagram UI? So for that, we need to learn about these HTML elements. So far, we have learned only about button. So similar to that, we have like multiple elements for different use cases. Okay. So in the first part, we will focus on learning these elements, mm -hmm. how to structure your content so that you know where to put your header, you know where to put your profile and other sections. Got it. So in order to learn about all the elements, there is a very popular and trusted trusted source on the internet. It's called MDN. It's a Mozilla developer network. Okay. And if you guys don't know about Mozilla, Mozilla was the first company who created the browser as well as the language JavaScript. So they have this documentation where you can go and read about all the HTML tags. Right. So this is the section where you can learn about uh, how to write HTML and what are what are different types of elements are there. So this is an example of P tags. Of course, if you want to showcase a paragraph with a bold text, this is how you write it. So P tag defines a paragraph and strong is basically to emphasize on a bold text here. Got it. Yeah. What if I write bold instead of strong? What's going to happen? So it's going to actually it's going to be the same only. Oh, so I can use bold yeah, or can, strong basically. Can use bold and, and tell strong. me one thing. Why is the P ending over here instead of after strong? Is, am I supposed to start and end things in that order. Like for example, I started P here and strong next, and then I'm ending P first and strong next. Is that how it's supposed to be? Actually, th this is, this is uh, HTML is not very strict in terms of your uh, opening and closing tags. Even if I remove this strong tag right now, it will not throw me any error. It will just like, uh, don't throw you any errors. Uh, that's a benefit as well as a problem uh, in HTML because it doesn't throw you any HTML errors. Does that make it very hard to find bugs in HTML? Exactly. So unless until you know the core concepts, you know all the fundamentals of HTML, it's very hard for you to debug. So that's the exact problem. It's very difficult to identify bugs in the HTML. And that's why like a lot of developers who are using ChatGPT to generate HTML code, they're not able to even write code because they don't have the fundamental of HTML is ready. And, and to solve this problem, I have a cool extension for you. In VS Code, you can go and uh, install something called HTML Hint. Okay. This is a special plugin built for VS Code. Okay. Now this plugin will scan through your code and tell you all the problems as per the MDN docs. Got it. So it's kind of like my bug assister, my, yeah. my personal virtual QA. Yeah. So these kind of tools are also known as static code analysis tools. It's basically because they are analyzing your code statically as compared to other automation techniques, which we learn about uh, in the course, like where you can like uh, write some automation, which, which can test your code in real time. Awesome. What else do we need to cover in HTML basics? Are you going to show a few more tags that we are exploring? Is that what we're going to do? Yeah. So just like paragraph tag, we have another thing called H1. So this is a very important tag whenever you need to start a heading. So this is how it looks like. And similar, ah, okay. similar to this, we have like seven tags in HTML for uh, different sizes. So you can do H2. So as and when we keep going up the numbers, the size reduces. Size is reduces yeah. And H1 is the largest. Yeah, H1 is the largest and we have this until H7. After H7, even if you give any number, it will basically give you the same size of the right. last heading. Because Got this it. is the smallest size uh, HTML comes with. Got it. So right now we know how to do bold, we know how to do paragraphs, we know how to do headings, we know how to do buttons. What else do we need for Instagram? And what else should a noob, a complete beginner in HTML know? What, what, is there anything, any other tags that we have to explore today? So there is one more important tag, it's called anchor tag. And this tag is responsible for connecting the world. So this, oh, wow, okay. 
so this is your uh, anchor tag anchor tag is very special because it helps you to create hyperlinks oh the www.xyz.com exactly. slash permalink slash exactly. whatever exactly exactly whenever you want to link one website to another website on the internet you will use these hyperlinks ah so all the internal links the all embedded links exactly. etc is done via anchor tag so without anchor tags there's no internet exactly that's why this is the one nice. of the foundational nice. element so let's start by writing a so it's very simple and here i want to introduce one more thing about html which we haven't spoken about okay. this is called attribute attributes uh, helps html to extend the func functionality of the code so right now if i only add a tag here and i'll mm -hmm. say write a link so it doesn't know what part it needs to link to this particular text okay now in order to mention what exactly you want to link we will use attribute and we will use href attribute okay so this is how you write it href is equals to colons and under the colons you can write anything so i can write my website name and uh, yeah so the moment uh, i write it it will convert this into a hyperlink got it so href is essentially used in order to do the actual linking behind the hood exactly got exactly. it so if i click on this it will redirect me to my website awesome awesome yeah so we have covered button h1 paragraph strong and anchor tags and this will set you up with a good foundations to start writing html code are you telling me that if i want to work as a front end developer or a full stack developer at an organization this is all the foundation that i need not all the foundations you still have like a lot to learn because like obviously this like you can't just learn four or five tags now you're on a right track uh, uh -huh. to basically start your journey got it and i can give you now resources where you can from where you can learn and, and you i can, can expand on you my can knowledge. expand on my, expand got on it, your got knowledge. It. so i've essentially built the foundation of the house and right now we're starting to build the yeah. walls and the windows and the doors etc yeah. etc exactly and then we're going to paint it with css exactly so on our way to be a coder guys Cool. All right. So now, since we've covered the basics of HTML, what comes next? So so far, we have written very raw HTML here, and this, to be honest, it's not the correct way to write HTML. I explained to you like this because it's very easy to understand mm -hmm. instructions one by one. But in order for browsers to make sense of your code, you need to pass few other elements. Okay. Right? Let's start with the correct structure. Okay. I understood Sudhan pretty well so far. I think whatever you explained was fairly simple. And if you guys felt the same way, hit the like button and subscribe to 100x. Let's move on. So this is the correct way to start HTML and all the code will live inside these tags. Right. So nothing goes beyond forward slash HTML. Exactly. So Got this it. is this is your boundary of web this is the boundary of web page. Got it. Now in the HTML, we have two things. One is head and another one is body. Can you guess what the purpose of head and body uh i can imagine that body is where you write the bulk of your content head i am assuming is i don't know for the header of the page yeah as you guess write the first part which is a body so right. body is where you write all the code whatever part is visible to you as a user on the web page is written under the body mm -hmm. but head is a special tag so for example there are other uh, sources also on the internet which reads your website and which are not human beings these are your bots these are your crawlers and your computers on another computer servers right mm -hmm. so suppose when you google search your internet it crawls everything whatever is written and it needs some certain information like meta tags which will define the description the title right, what SEO is what stuff what is yeah what is this page about what is the description of this page what is the language of this page so all these things and these things are not necessarily meant for end users so that's why we are keeping these things separate in the head tag so do we write something in the head tag yeah we'll write the first uh, title this will basically tell all the search engines crawlers and even like the entire internet this is the title of your web page similar to you writing the title of a book ah Okay. So coming from a marketing and content background, I've done some SEO work. So I used to use a lot of Webflow and there I used to put in the title, the description of the page. So are you saying that exactly. every time I edit the title, I'm essentially editing the head tag? Yeah, exactly. Got Whenever it. you are editing the title, this is basically the same thing which you are editing. Got it. And similar to that, uh, we have 
description which is where you write the description yeah. instagram is a social platform right where you connect people and post pictures blah 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 all that exactly exactly in order to save time what i usually prefer i have something called emit in my vs code mm-hmm. so which means like whenever i press this exclamation mm-hmm. and press enter it will give me this whole structure and this is the standard structure we all follow for writing html is this a something that you've specially programmed in your vs code or no, can this, this people come, watching this do it this comes with all the vs code editors okay so, awesome yeah so you don't need to write all those things so as you can see here it has already given us head tag body tag in the head it, we have a title which is like by default saying document we can go ahead and change it to our instagram uh, then we have like two more tags here and these tags basically tell you about the internet history for now we don't need to worry about the meta tags here because okay. we'll be focusing on building ui mm-hmm. and we'll do the seo optimization in the later part of the cohort perfect and let's but, let's get to the exciting parts yeah let's get to the exciting part okay let's start uh, let's start by looking at instagram's website and okay. uh, i love the page that you've chosen <laughs> my favorite page on instagram same and youtube same. <laughs> So this is this is where you start thinking like a developer whenever you look at any website so what are, what are the first things which you see in this page okay i see uh the icon the circular logo i see i first see a header on top which has instagram it has the buttons login and sign up then there is the circular logo which is the profile picture then there's a bunch of text and there's few more buttons uh there's a few more clickable things over here which is like follow post etc etc you have the story highlight section and then you have the grid which has all the posts and you have three different sections over here which is post reels and tagged and all of it is pretty much in the same square format exactly so this is similar to how even a developer thinks so you identify all the atomic level components in this play, in this page Got so it. as you mentioned a button button is an atomic component which means like you cannot break down it into further pieces like it has okay. to exist as a button it's like Other an electron way. right it's an electron right electron so, can't be broken down <laughs> exactly this page is now built using these small atomic components which are your buttons icons headings so all these things and this is how we start building right as you okay. as you seen in the previous section we have built first button then paragraph Correct. and then headings Correct. same thing we're going to do here we'll start by building the follow button first and then we'll add the headings like 100x engineers and the post and other text and then we'll add the hyperlink similar to this got it awesome let's get started i'm very excited cool so before we start writing code let's add some acceleration to the environment ai right? acceleration This is not the AI acceleration. This is the acceleration. We'll definitely add AI, but uh, okay. So this is basically whenever you start writing code uh, and you want to ch- you want to check the changes, you have to refresh the page again and again. Mm-hmm. So in order to avoid that, there is a very famous plugin. If you go to VS Code extension and type live server, so live server is. So I don't have to always hit refresh every time you I write new lines. Of code. Yeah, it will not seem very significant, but once you start writing, so you can't imagine like how many times you save and reload. So it will yeah, basically yeah. save. It's that small thing yeah, that you want to get out of the way. Exactly. Exactly. Fair. So this is the live server by Ritwik Day. You can install it, and after the installation of this extension, it will give you a button. It will give you a button here. and you can just click on this go live button okay. and it will just launch your website on your computer like this right now it's empty so let's start writing some text here and the moment i uh, oh, press control s it will automatically refresh my page for my for me got it so you have to press control s after you yeah. write something yeah, got exactly it. so and that also we can accelerate in vs code there is a function called auto save So, uh, so you don't even have to press control plus. So this is how we do uh, acceleration at full speed, at full nice. throttle, right? So we can toggle the auto save here. So now we have uh, automated the save as well. So you don't need to do anything at all. You just start writing your code, and it will automatically reflect on your browser. Awesome! Isn't awesome. isn't it crazy? Yeah, it is. So it's compiling your code in real time. Nice. Let's, oh. Are we going to make the button now? Yeah. So let's start by creating button. Uh, we'll be creating the follow button. Okay. So the moment we start writing button, as you can see, we have now follow button on the screen. Okay. So now we have a button, but 
it doesn't quite look like the Instagram follow button, you know, like with the, I mean, this has an outline, it's not the same font, etc, etc. How do we how do we get from here to there? Like to understand this, let's go back to what we discussed in the introduction. Okay. So we are done with the structure, which is the HTML part. Now it comes about styling. So we need to add some clothes here. So we're going to introduce CSS over here. Exactly. So we're going to introduce CSS here. Awesome. And uh, so this is my favorite technique. This is how I learned. Okay. And uh, just watch me guys carefully because I'm going to teach you CSS in just next one minute. In, in a minute? In a minute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Big so expectations. You can, so you can set the timer. Okay. I'm actually going to time you for a minute. Okay. And okay. your time starts now. Cool. So we have three things in CSS. It's called selectors, property and values. So first okay. so we're going to write about selector because we are selecting button component. We write button and then we write the property, which property you want to change. Property I want to change is background color. And the value which I want to give the background color is uh, blue. Okay. So uh -huh. this is property, this is value, this is selector. And that's all CSS. That's 30 seconds. What that's do you mean that's all 30 CSS? Second. Exactly. That's like, actually, I beat my own mark. Uh, <laughs> 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 this is the important thing to understand in CSS because everything can be broken down into these three things. So you have selectors, properties, and value. Once you start designing your HTML, it's like you build your buttons, you build your headings, you build your paragraphs. First, you have to select. Say, I want to, I built button. So I want to select button. We use button command here. And then what property you need to apply or you need to change. I, I, I gave background color here. That's my property. And the value which I need to give to this background color, it can be blue, green, whatever value. So that's my uh, value. Ah, now you okay. can go ahead and follow the MDN docs. There you can find all the properties so and there's values. basically three parameters. Exactly. And the entirety of CSS is based on these. Can you can you repeat what those three parameters are? Selectors, okay. property, and value. Got it. So selector is like a button. What else can be a selector? So we have different type of selectors. You can select uh, via HTML tags. So all the HTML tags by default can be acted as a selector. So H1 is a selector, H1 paragraph is a selector, is a selector, paragraph selector anchor is a, table selector, is a selector, table is a selector. Now there will be a uh, ambiguity when you have say two buttons in your code base and you only want to select one button. Right. For that we use classes and IDs. Oh. So we you, you pass an attribute called ID or a class to a particular set of... Uh, so you label it basically. Yeah, so this, like is, this, this, is, this is how you do it. So you go here. In the HTML, write an attribute ID is equals to the say, we'll write follow button. So now the moment I add this ID to it, CSS can identify or select this button through this ID. Understood. So the way to select is we add hash here and uh, we just uh, use the name ID name. The now, ID. If, yeah, now if I uh, copy this button and uh, I remove the ID from here, it will not apply the button uh, styles to that, that ah, button. Okay. So you can select a particular button using ID. Got but it. If you want to apply all the styles to all your buttons, just change this to your button. Got it. So that's basically selectors. Yeah. What is the next thing? Next thing is properties. Okay. Now properties can be all the things which you want to style about that element. It can be background color. It can be text color, font size, anything basically you can think right. of. Bold italics. Bold all italics. That. All the styling options you can think of. CSS has it. Got so, it. Yeah. And the value is essentially whatever value it has. Yeah, like if it is a font, it can be Arial, Calibri. Exactly. If it's a color, it's white, yellow, white, green, blue. Exactly. Can I also get like lime green or turquoise or sure, colors like sure. that? Sure, so, sure. So this, so this is where your VS code helps you. If you now look at carefully, I can hover over the button. Oh, there's an actual graphical and, UI. Over yeah. There. And there's, there's a it's beautiful UI, which can help you select a button. So this, uh, this works on RGB. So RGB stands for red, green, blue. This is a standard in the color theory. So right. every color can be built using these three values, like red, right. green, blue, right? So you can just change any, this to anything. Very cool. uh, and yeah, you can select whatever color you like. So if I want to basically build an Instagram kind of UI, I just yeah. have to figure out what exactly is the RGB value of the Instagram yeah. button and apply the same thing here. And I'm going to tell you a cool hack to do that. That will save your time. Again, the acceleration part we're talking about. All right. So I'm let's, loving all the accelerations we're doing here. Let's uh, go to the Instagram page. Now, I'll tell you about this extension. This extension is called Colorzilla. You can search it on the Chrome Web Store and you can install this extension. And the moment you install this, it will give you this uh, 
color picker here. Right. Now click on this color picker and you can hover over it anywhere oh, on this okay. web in website and you can basically steal anyone's color. So this is my hack to nice. steal color. I'm not, I'm going to steal Instagram's follow button's color. So when I hover over it, it will already copy paste. It will automatically copy paste this and okay. I just need to do this. And the moment I save it, if you if you look at this, but this my, is a hex code, not an RGB. Yeah, hex code is basically another representation of RGB. It uses hexadecimal uh, to represent the colors of our red, green, red, green, blue, and uh, Got sorry, it. it's red, basically green, tomato, blue. tomato. Yeah, like yeah, this is how basically you copy colors and paste it here. Awesome. Now, Anna, how can we use the, all of what we've learned so far in order to make this button exactly like the Instagram button? So for that, you need to learn more about the CSS properties okay. because that's where the magic lies. See, we learned about the concepts. Now we can select this element. We can apply some properties. We can apply some values. But in order to make it exactly look like Instagram's button, we need to understand what properties and values we need to apply. Got just it. just tell me like what, what all properties you can think of uh, in this button. Um, so this button obviously does not have a border around it the edges are curved rather than it yeah. being pointy. So that, that's a very good observation because by default, if you look at our button, our button has a black border hmm. and that's why it's looking different. But the Instagram doesn't have any border at all. Correct. So that's a very good observation. Good and, work. and I think the third property would be the font. Exactly. Yeah. Also, one more thing which you haven't noticed, I think uh, this is the curved borders, right? Correct. So the borders which we have right now are like slightly pointed. Right? Correct. So we have to make it a little bit curved and we have to change the font of this button. Got it. So we're going to do all these three things and let's make it look like Instagram's button then. Awesome. Cool. So border none. So this is the way you write. The moment I write this, the, the border property ah. and I apply the value none. It Slowly means like starting to take shape. Yeah. It means like uh, there is uh, no border. no border at all. So we'll keep the other button as it is so that we can see the transformation, right? Another Point. thing was the, sorry, another thing was the pointiness, Yeah, pointiness, the rounded uh, corners. Uh -huh. For the rounded corners, we use this property called border radius. Okay. Now, now as, as you can see on my screen, like I'm not writing the entire code. I'm just like, say, writing three letters and my VS code is giving me all the suggestions. That's where the power of your code editor comes into the picture. It will help you to write code faster. So now I, I can see all the properties in CSS. So you don't need to go and search. These are the properties. Does also have a description on what it yeah. does? Yeah. So can you go to border radius? Defines so yeah. the radii of the outer. Oh, okay. So this is how you can learn. You don't need to like search on Google or chat GPT. It's basically the best way to learn. You just like hover over the property. It will give you the reference. It will give you the definition of the property. If you still don't understand, you can just click on this link called MDN reference. It will open the reference doc for this entire property. Oh, it will automatically do yeah. Mozilla. Yeah, and it will automatically do that. And you can just go and read about uh, this nice. property and nice. learn about. So I think a good way in order to master HTML, CSS and even like front end dev is to just, I don't know, replicate some three to four popular websites and just do that to the uh, T so that uh, you know exactly what CSS properties are there, what kind of HTML attributes and tags you can add, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Exactly, exactly. So let's add some value. So if you go through this, this, this will tell you like the border radius has, uh, has to give some value, like how much the roundedness you need mm -hmm. for now, I'm going to give it to five pixel and this pixel uh, is a unit in CSS. So it can be, uh, say, I don't like, I think, uh, for, sorry, five. Yeah. Okay, 10 so, is a little too round. Yeah, 10 is a little too round. 5 is nice. But th there is a problem which I think we, we missed in the observation. The spacing between the border and the follow text is actually uh, very less. Very less. Uh, yeah. Uh, very less on our uh, uh, code. But on yes, Instagram, yes. it's like uh, much higher. Correct. Now, to understand the spacing, we have to introduce a new concept called box model. And okay. this is the most important concept in CSS because everything inside CSS is a box. Like whatever you're looking at, whether it's a paragraph, whether it's a heading or a button, CSS looks at it at, as a box. So it will apply all the concepts. Now to understand this, so let's, I'm going to introduce another new tool. It's called a Chrome developer tool. 
So you can right click on your Chrome window, do the inspect and uh, you can click on this little icon. This is your selector and select your button. So the moment you select your button, it will show all the styling here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these are the stylings you can see. So far we have uh, applied background color, border and border radius. So you can also like toggle stylings from this inspector. Ah, okay, you can turn yeah, on and off. Yeah, yeah. So this is basically your debugger tool. Got it. Now to understand box model, this is basically how I use it. The box model comprised of four things, margin, padding, border, and content. And as you can see here, this is the best way to learn because the moment you hover over things, you can understand what is margin, what is padding, and what is uh, content. So when I hover over the middle part, which is the content, it it's is the yeah, text. it is highlighting me the text and if i go to padding it's highlighting if you can see uh, if i zoom into this yeah so when i do this it will highlight uh, the space between my border and the text so that is your right. padding Middle zone, yeah yeah so whatever is like uh, inside your uh, border and the sorry the the space between your border and the content is called padding Got so it. that is what it is. Uh, and so border is border. And, yeah, and, and border is border. border. We, we removed border so it's not highlighting anything. Okay. And margin. Margin is important here. It's not showing margin right now because we haven't applied it. So let's go ahead and apply the margin and padding and then come, come back to this thing. So I'm going to apply margin. Margin 20 pixel. And actually do 5 pixel. And I'll apply padding. Ah, now we have more space in the button. Yeah. So I'm going to do this. And uh, if you do... Why did you why did you add two values over there in padding? Yeah. So that's, that's basically I'm going to tell you right now. Let me just uh, switch over. Just give me a minute. I'll switch over to the Chrome Inspector tool. Now, if you go back and look at or observe the box model here, now we can see the margin because we just applied margin 5px and this is the orange radius. It's basically like a default space around the element. Exactly. This is like the space bet uh, between your border and the other elements and the, uh, sorry, yeah, diff sorry, space between border and the other elements. Got it. Right. And uh, we, as we have padding, so this is why, can, can you look at this, Sid? Yeah. So we have two values here. Oh, it's like the length and the breadth. Yeah, it's exactly the length and breadth. So padding has two axes, like the two axes on which padding gets applied is X axis, which is your, uh, sorry, X axis, which is your horizontal axis, and then Y axis, which is your vertical axis. So by default, if you only pass one value to padding, it will apply all the horizontal as well as the we vertical. Basically imagine that this is a square. Exactly. This will imagine this as a square. But if you pass two values, so it will just apply it as a rectangle. Got it. It'll like apply 10 px as a vertical. So 10 px is your vertical a vertical axis and 20 px is your horizontal axis. Got it. So that's I think it. now the button looks very similar to the Instagram button. So now this button looks a lot like the Instagram button. And the only thing that's different about it is the font of the text follow. So how do we make that happen? Exactly. I'm guessing it's another selector. No, here you are wrong, okay. actually. So this is a property, not a selector. Because selector okay. we are using for the button itself. Ah, so, right, the second level. Yeah, this is the second level Got the it. property. So the property which we'll be using to change the font it's basically your font family. The font family, if you have like used a Word doc or any editor, you have like must be familiar with like, you can change font family. There are different uh, sans serif and uh, Arial and Times yeah. New Roman, these kind of fonts. So similar to that, in every browser, there's some fonts which are built in, which are your Times, Times New Roman is basically your default font, uh, which comes with the browser. But in this case, we want to use font similar to Instagram. Mm -hmm. Instagram by default uses uh, Roboto font on the Android app and uh, SF Pro on the iOS app. Uh, but unfortunately, SF Pro is a uh, 
proprietary font which means like apple has the license and you need to buy the font uh, wow. but like for this particular case we can use the freely available font which is its android font it's also known as roboto got it right and now here comes the ai accelerated part Ooh. so we finally so we gonna we gonna take help of chat gpt uh -huh. to get the font awesome awesome so i'll write a very simple Uh, prompt. So I'm going to write this font. How to apply the Roboto font uh, to my CSS button? I'm mentioning also that I'm I'm applying this to my button. Okay. And let's see what GPT has to say. Blah blah blah. Intro. Include the Roboto font. It gave a line of code, yeah. which directly I think it imports from Google Fonts. Yeah. So uh, Google Fonts is the largest uh, library of all the open source fonts. so all the fonts uh, which we will be using which are like freely available are uh, available by google apis chat gpt understand this very well and instead of we going and figuring out and searching the right font and downloading the files it gave us a shortcut already so we just need to put this link in our file so it's okay. and it also gave us the instructions so these are the like three steps it gave me include the roboto font which is like you can include this let's do that Let's do this. So it also says that like for include the following line in the head section of your HTML document. Okay. So you know we have already mentioned the head section. Uh huh. So let's go and add this. Got it. So this step is to import the yeah. font into the index file. Exactly. Got it. So this is like loading the font from the Google APIs. Okay. And then the next step is style your button, uh -huh. where it has already given the ID. I don't need to follow the ID here, uh, the my button selector, because you know the selector which we are using is the follow button because we already created this selector, right? So we will be using only the property and values here. So just copy this property and value. and we're going to paste it here and that's all we'll just save it and we don't need the last step because we already have the id okay got so it so the moment you do it like you can see the difference oh. between the font right i want to compare this with the actual instagram font yeah i think the instagram font has a little bold type yeah. face so the the reason why it's looking different is because i'm i'm looking at it on my mac and mac uses the sf pro font which we spoke about right ah okay so if okay. you if you if you are looking it from a windows device or the android device Got it. this will look very similar but this looks pretty close yeah yeah but one more thing here when i hover on it it changes color but here it doesn't do that how do we make that happen so this brings us to the concept of pseudo classes in css okay so as you as you have seen right uh, we need selector to select an element similar to that an element can have different ui states which means like it can be hovered over uh, so like my mouse whenever i hover my mouse over it that can be a state and you can apply a property on this particular state so this is actually different from you selecting an element this is now you selecting the state of the element so you can have like a click element so if you are clicking and and you can like uh, see it on my screen if i'm clicking this button so it's changing the color what happens if i click on this nothing so happens nothing happens okay. because we haven't mentioned so now we are, we know these are the different states which can exist in the css like one is when you are hovering your mouse over the button and one you can clicking it now especially what we want to achieve here uh, we want this hover effect right i'm going to add a follow button and uh, to select the hover state we'll write colon hover and the brackets so this is basically you are now selecting the hover state of the same button mm -hmm. so if you apply say a different background let's just to differentiate right now apply the red background here let's see what happens so as i'm hovering uh, over it it changes the color of this it. button okay. so now uh, we need a darker shade of this Now instead of me figuring out that color I can just uh, use my VS code and uh, sorry I'll just copy this color first and uh, change this state to maybe a little darker yeah I think this look this is looking better right mm -hmm. let's do this so let's have yeah oh perfect so this is like very close perfect. to perfect 
very close to instagram yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i still feel the spacing and uh, font size is something we can change so let's quickly add the font size also um, i want to change font size to 16 pixel now how do i know that i want to apply 16 pixel is because i'm a skill developer first of all <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if hit a like <laughs> if you think sadant is a skill developer and yeah. subscribe to 100x so i i have added font size as well as font weight which is another property which will basically tell because the if you look at the instagram font it's a little bit bolder than what our font was got it so i added the font now weight. it looks pretty much exactly the same as instagram exactly okay here's what i want to do now so we have the message button right next to the follow button now i am going to make make an attempt in order to write the message button from whatever i've learned so i'm going to use all of your hard work and copy this entire thing and i'm going to create the button right now now instead of giving it an id as follow button i'm going to call it message button and i'm going to type message and here i'm going to change the id and boom you're done boom <laughs> but this doesn't hover so i'm going to add that over here yeah so we're going to copy this and we're going to change the name of this control s ta da look who's a dev now congratulations <laughs> you are now a ui developer cool yeah Can I get place? Can I get a job as a front end developer? Uh, you might not get right now. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon, huh? But yeah, right after this cohort, you will definitely. But get. this is not bad. Like I'm pretty proud of myself. Yeah. Like, I created an Instagram message button in like what half an hour or something. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Pat myself on the back. Thank you for that. <laughs> awesome. So we know how to create any kind of a button, mm. right? So let's say that I want to create the login button. All I need to do is change the color, and that's about exactly. it. Exactly. It's the same concept that is being applied. Right. What else are we going to build now? So as we are going like uh, from top down, so we already know how to write text. As we seen, like we use. I think that should be easy. Like probably yeah. this would be an H two or an H three yeah. tag or something. Exactly. So the next big thing in the header part is your profile picture. Okay. So 100x is your profile picture here, and it's rounded, it's circular. So this is the next element which you wanna get build, mm -hmm. and let's start with that. Cool. Let's go for it. So cool. We have like uh, built these buttons. Uh, can, can we get rid of that uh, yeah. ugly looking follow button? <laughs> yeah, the transformation is done now. Yeah, so we've made a better follow before button. Before after now. is done. So let's uh, yeah, let's start with the. Uh, image thing. So now this is also one interesting tag. I think we haven't spoken about this so far. So this we are introducing a new tag in the HTML library. It's called IMG. So IMG stands for the image tag. Okay. And uh, similar to what you have mentioned, you have what you have like uh, seen in the href tag, right? So in the anchor tag, we have an attribute like href. Here we have an attribute like src. So what does src means? It's basically the source. Now whenever you are embedding an image. that needs to have some source on the internet otherwise uh, your computer won't be able to understand from where to fetch that image right okay got it it, it can be either on your system or it can be hosted on a website okay right so i basically have to put a link over here yeah. or if it's on my system i have to put the root directory yeah. etc exactly the whole path right now uh, for simplicity we we have like hosted our 100x page um so we know the logo and the images are got there it. so if if somebody watching this wants to upload an image they can just upload it on a google drive yeah they can upload it on google drive and they can link at got it also if you're using notion we are also using notion here so you can just like put it on notion notion will al already create a link for your images and you can post that got it so the moment you add this so uh, okay and also one thing i noticed over here is right now we're starting to write things in the body tag and not the head tag exactly so this is like all the ui elements whatever is visible to your users uh that is basically going inside the body this is the first principle got it okay. cool um so now we have added the image and as you can see i can see the image but uh, yeah the buttons and all is <laughs> gone yeah everything is gone i think it's not gone but i think it's somewhere hidden oh yeah, uh, this is okay. there got it, got it. The, i i don't think we defined the size yeah. of the image so that's the problem which we we are facing right now is we have loaded the image but we haven't specified the size hmm. because it needs to have some certain uh, width and height if got you it. don't specify the size browser will take the actual uh, height and width and because this image was like a full uh, hd image, yeah. yeah 
image so it took like the entire page for us now let's do that let's define the size so again like let's take a help of css here mm -hmm. and uh, i'll uh, so now we're going to go back to the style tag in the yeah, header tag so for now like i'll just select image tag so uh, do you think it's a good practice to have a mental model wherein anything css related go to head style anything related to html go to body exactly for now like you can keep this mental model got it so right now i'm using the html image selector which uh, which is not a specific id or a class so i will run into an issue in mm -hmm. future and i i want everyone who is watching it to comment down and say i saw it if you if you notice it let's do you, do you want me to keep quiet if i notice it <laughs> well, you can also you can also say it okay <laughs> so so right now like we, we will not, not face any issues until unless uh, i'll introduce more image tag so yeah the first thing what do you think is the first thing we should write because we need to fix the height and width so i think some parameter that says width height or something exactly like exactly so that's very simple i'll just say width let's put 100 pixels for now the moment we say 100 pixel you can see the image size went down okay. and it automatically reduces the height as well right because it's kind of balancing the image with the aspect ratio because every image has aspect ratio itself got it but if you want like make it square which we want in our case so we can like uh, uh, restrict it to 100 pixel height 100 pixel width so but this is already square yeah, this so is already square so you can yeah. like uh, you can actually skip this part also got it but just to be safe uh, like if you are following it and you have like a different aspect ratio image mm -hmm. and you want to make it center just put both height and width got it right now the next task uh, just can you can you observe the next task for us like to we have, have the circular frame exactly so to add the circular frame i think this is the one property which we have used i want to test your memory now sir one property that we've used yeah to make it circular is it border radius exactly you're right so awesome so i I, i have a good student with me so <laughs> i i hope you guys also remember these things this is how yeah, you it's be like me <laughs> just be like said so let's add border radius and uh, so i told you like border radius has this value the one more interesting thing about border radius is it makes everything uh, circular and that's how it works that the radius property is basically telling you that how circular you want this uh, component to be mm -hmm. if you put it 100% let's say we'll put 100% here let's see what happens oh that's perfect that's perfect circle yeah and if we just reduce it to 50% let's see what happens it will be an oval or something actually it's still a circle okay okay so the the reason why it's still circle because the height and width is too small right now to to notice a difference if i'll increase a uh, height here Let's do it 500. Now you can ah, see. Ah, okay. Now it's an oval. Yeah, now it's an oval. Got it. Right. So if you want a perfect circle, you can always give it to 100 100 percent. So which mm. is this will ensure that uh, everything will remain. Uh, it's, sorry, it's oval also because like the height or the width and height are not same. Got it. Yeah. Let's let's get it back to the smaller size. Cool, cool, cool. Let's get it back to the smaller size, and uh, we'll keep this 100 percent. Awesome. So I think we have the profile picture exactly like it looks. Yeah. But the only problem is the alignment. Like, how do we fix that? Like, I want the follow the hundred x logo should be a little lower. The follow and the message button should uh, be aligned with the top of the circle. How do I figure out uh, that's uh, that's HTML? I'm assuming some yeah. padding or something like that. Exactly. So this is where we are entering in the area of layouts. So okay. layouts is. it's basically the combination of html and css where you design the structure and the whole skeleton of your website so first okay. you define okay what content needs to be there in the website mm -hmm. you you enter all the content inside the particular tag say you want headings you will put it in h1 you want text you could put it in p tag images image tag and then you add css and uh, you add, you'll add also the box model which we spoke about right the mm -hmm. padding margin so it's basically the combination of all these three things and this is the one thing which will basically differentiate you as a professional versus a noob or a beginner developer because a lot of people learn these basics but not able to apply it in the conjunction so this is what we're going to learn next about how to design the layout so just let's get into the layouts part then awesome let's go cool So UI development can be broken down into two parts. One is components and layouts. So so far we have built components like buttons, images, hmm. and the next part is the layout. And so every layout on the internet which you see can be broken down into two things: vertical layout and horizontal layout. Every design can be built using some combination of these two. Okay. 
now let's take an example of our instagram app right so mm. first thing what i do is if i have to build a layout for this i'll take a screenshot of this part and uh, say this is what we want to build and right. i use so uh, excel draw as a whiteboarding tool or maybe you can use your own image editor or paint so i'll draw boxes around this so this is an exercise for you now you know what is vertical layout and what is horizontal layout yeah so now we have broken down into two columns what do you think this layout will be said looks like a vertical layout exactly you're right so this is a vertical layout and similarly you can go and uh, again start drawing boxes for the inside field uh, so this i want to break down into boxes like this so i'll create one box for my heading another ah, box for following so and this would be a horizontal layout exactly so this is an horizontal layout so we have uh, how many rows here we have four rows we have four rows here and uh, again if you take a closer look from the beginning this has more columns inside this row oh yes yeah so this has like exactly three columns so this will become your which layout this is again vertical is like in vertical so this is how you create nested layouts you can break down any design on the internet like this once you're done building these boxes around your layouts you know exactly where to put things in your in the place right will the 88 posts 88 followers all that also be in a vertical layout exactly this will also be in a vertical layout because these are different text components got it and do right. we have to divide that thing also a society of builders that's one yeah so that will be again one more nesting which i haven't done but you can go deep um, yeah so this is this is how you start thinking about the layouts now to make things simpler so like when css started we used to juggle a lot uh, between positions and other properties because there was no proper way to align these things like this what i did right now so then after that uh, flexbox launched and that changed the life of developers because now you don't need to worry about exactly matching pixel by pixel where to put a particular element and uh, like things like that so flexbox made a lot of things uh, simpler flexbox is a tool so let's understand flexbox and i'm going to give you a cool way to learn flexbox because a lot of people struggle with this first we'll understand the concepts behind how, how to use flexbox and then we're going to play a game oh nice cool. okay so like just to uh, explain you the concepts let's uh, create a layout mm -hmm. where we have uh, three buttons and we want these buttons to be in center of the page okay this by the way this was like the classic css interview question also like people used to give uh, before flexbox this was a challenge because it was very hard if you can meme such, such a meme this is a famous meme in the css dev community that centering things is not as easy as it looks because like you have to like manage different screen sizes and they are like on mobile things are very short and like uh, things are very small and that you have like the larger screen size so that is like a a very I intensive task but flexbox we'll see like how flexbox made it very easy for us okay let's start by creating a container so ha have you played lego i love legos yeah. i have a collection oh that's great that's great so similar to how you arrange different legos together right uh -huh. but you you need a separate box for each and every lego set otherwise the pieces will scatter here and there right so similar to that we have a div inside html so div is basically a box where you can put all the content so that your content will not scattered here and so there. it's like a it's used for organization exactly it's for organization so let's create one div which is our box and we'll add an id here okay so that we can select it we don't want to apply stylings to all the divs because we'll create like smaller boxes mm -hmm. so uh, let's call this div a container and similar to that i want to create three boxes inside it because we want three buttons so we we'll create three divs one this is for which part of the instagram app this is to explain layout first this is layout part okay um so yeah let's create three divs now in every div i will put a button so this is a box we have a we have a bigger box and in the bigger box we have like other small boxes so we have three small boxes three divs okay there's one button yeah so this we have second one ah okay i'll just say follow one follow two and follow three for so that you can remember these are the three buttons Got now it. this is how by default uh, css will display this right 
because everything just notice here one thing because everything is a box so it will call it will also known as a block element uh -huh. the block means it will take the entire width on your screen uh -huh. as compared to if you see the buttons we have used below they are not taking the full width so this is the observation uh, ah, of the it. box versus uh, if you put your containers if you put your components here and there they won't take like the entire width so there are certain elements in html which has a display property called block so which means they will take the entire width on the page so because we have now three blocks mm -hmm. and inside each block we have a button so this is how css has represented it but now suppose we want uh, everything to be in single line so what we can do is uh, we will pick this container which is the main box and start writing css here so let's select again the concepts uh, first we do selectors and then in container uh, i'll write a property called display as you can see i write property display block so this is the default property if i add that nothing will happen because by default uh, the divs has the block okay. but the moment i'll change it to flex notice one thing ah yes yeah, so okay. everything is now started flowing in a row so what display flex did is basically change the layout of this entire uh, container from this to from this. yeah from uh, horizontal from vertical to horizontal. horizontal now this is how you can control of suppose this this is a default behavior of flex but imagine if you don't want flex to be in the horizontal layout okay so as we mentioned like we have both kind of layout horizontal and vertical mm -hmm. so th there comes the property called flex direction so here you can use column and row if you put column it will give everything uh, the vertical layout and if you don't want that column you can change it to row and by default on um, if you are writing it on your pc everything is uh, row got it so yeah we are done with so we are done with the uh, flex uh, row now the, the last part what we need to do is we have to put everything in center so to do that we'll use another property this is called justify content center and the moment i add this you can see everything is by default in center and Got i don't it. need to do anything right so this Got is it. this is very simple overview of flex but i know there's a lot of nuances in the flex box which uh, i i will not teach you but i want you to understand because the more you write code the more you learn about flex box mm -hmm. so i have a special game for all of you if you're following along with me i want you to pause this video and play the game and then come back to the video awesome let's play the game cool i'm excited this is a game called flexbox froggy you right. can play it on flexboxfroggy.com and uh, just read the description and your job is to put this frog on its place oh i have to get in on the lily sleeve. pad yeah, okay lily pad okay so let's the same try. thing what we did in the previous exercise right we used uh, display flex and then we added justify content and we we used the property called center just try doing that first let's see what happens just add center okay uh, you need to add semicolon ah okay <laughs> so once you do this uh, it's not a right answer but you can see the frog is now Got moving it. i think over here the thing is flex end okay woohoo congratulations woohoo awesome you have cleared the level 1 now what should i do so now the, this is the next level similarly you can play all the levels and uh, yeah once you're done with all this level i'll bet you I'm, you will become I'm, the layout expert I'm, 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 i just want to play like this level as well it just looks interesting <laughs> yeah okay i'm going to try just this <laughs> one last level this is super fun that's why i'm just doing it this is addictive also <laughs> justify content uh oh wow they uh took away the this thing yeah now you have to remember so you, you had the uh, flex end center flex start space around space between okay little close little close but these frogs are not exactly on the lily pad there is one more property called space around try that oh yeah ah, okay. so the difference between space between and space around is space around keeps the equal spaces from the beginning to end on the other hand space between only takes care of the space between the 
uh, elements, elements. Yeah. Got it. not awesome. on the first and last. Uh, this is such a cool way to learn. Exactly. Uh, CSS. Cool. Obviously, this is not going to be shown in the video, but I just finished all twenty-four levels, and uh, it's been fun. It's like freakishly addictive to play this, but this is such a fun way to learn Flexbox, and I feel like I understand it much better because I have a. Visual sense of how things are looking, which is exactly what you need. I'm assuming for exactly, Flexbox. Exactly. So now you know all the properties, what to use to uh, align your layouts. And whenever now you see any other layouts, you can think of it similar to your Flexbox problem, the froggy problem. Uh, you have a frog, you have to place it in a particular place, right? So let's do that, uh, and uh, let's start creating our layout. Awesome. So we already have this layout which we did, uh, where we created three boxes, mm -hmm. and we have applied this property called justify content center. Mm -hmm. Right now, you understand why we did it and how it works. Mm -hmm. Right. So let's go back to the our uh, diagram. So let's. What do you think? What what should be the first step? First step should be to create these two primary boxes, which is the vertical layouting of it. Exactly. Let's create two boxes. Right. You said we'll create two boxes. So I'm gonna remove these previous boxes and I'm just create two divs here. So these are your two boxes. And uh, so in first box, we'll put the image because that is what we have, right? Correct. So first box, let's put image here. And what is there in the second box? We have uh, like buttons bunch. and the text. Yeah, we have, the we second have... box is divided into four rows. Okay. Which is four so for now, just just write second box here. Like we don't add any any elements here. It's like second box, right? And uh, let's see the output. So as you can see, uh, because we have some properties we have mentioned, it's just like justify content center. Everything is centered by default. And you can see uh, the two boxes. If I'll hover over here. Yeah, this is the first box and this is the second box. Ah, got it. Right. So you can see like this. So this is your main container. Mm -hmm. And because everything is in center, so that's why it's showing you like this. And this is the first box and second box. And this is exactly what we need, right? Mm -hmm. So congratulations, you have learned layout. That's the awesome. first step. And you have to just repeat this process throughout. Got it. So again, go back to the diagram. Now in the second box, we have need- to make four divs. Yeah, you have to make four divs. So let's do that. Let's replace this and create four divs. This is the first div. I'm gonna just copy this. So we have four boxes, and mm -hmm. uh, so we'll start with the first box, and let's also start naming these boxes because otherwise we'll get confused. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now uh, here I want to introduce uh, one more attribute which we used. We can use definitely ID here to select a box, but suppose uh, in all these uh, boxes. I want to apply the same styles. If I'll apply the same styles and I use ID again and again, that will be redundant for me. Instead of repeating IDs again and again, there's a, another attribute called class. Class is uh, used when you want to apply styles to similar set of uh, elements, right? Say, I want to call all these uh, as a profile, um, profile elements. Cool, let's call this profile elements so I can just copy this and uh, so I'm, I'm going to just uh, write few comments here so that uh, we'll be on the same page, right? Uh, this is the first column and to write comments in HTML, uh, you can do this, sorry, angle brackets, exclamation and then minus minus. So this, whatever you ah. read between this, this will act as a comment and the special part of comment is this is not for machine or for computer. This is for your fellow developers. Got it. Or this never comes on to the page yeah, or anything. This, never comes, this is basically a description or you can say a documentation of your code. This is how you document. Got now, it. there's a, another shortcut for this. If you're on a Mac, you can press command and slash. So ah, the okay. moment you do this, it will automatically convert this line into comment. So awesome. I'm just going to write, this is the first column which we have uh, built. And then we have another column. This is the second column. So inside the second column, we are building it. And this is our first row. Mm -hmm. Cool. So let's start designing our first row. Uh, what all elements you can see in the first row set? There's 100x engineers, text, and yeah. there's the two buttons that we made. Exactly. So we have total three boxes here. Mm -hmm. So let's again create three boxes. Div is first box. First box has a text called 100x engineers. Mm -hmm. uh, for now, let's put it uh, directly 100x engineers. 
actually just put it in the heading uh, let's put it in the h2 okay yeah okay. makes sense so 100x engineers this is our first box is done second box we have uh, buttons so i'll use this code and uh, paste it here and let's see the output so now we have something like this and you can verify this uh, by using the same inspect tool and hover over this this is the first box which is your first column mm -hmm. this is the second column and in second column for you have a first box where you have h2 and then you have a second box which where you have two buttons got right? it right now we have put both of the buttons in a single box and i'll tell you the reason why but before moving to that uh, do you observe any anything which is different from this layout as compared to this layout yeah it came in two different lines yeah uh, and i think h2 was not the right tag it's probably h3 or h4 it's a little bigger yeah and so style is not yeah. right as well yeah. styling is not styling there. is not there because styling we haven't applied yet so styling will do that first like uh, finish the layout part but it also created two divs like this instead of like yes yeah. yeah this is because the h2 has a display property of block if you hover over it you can see this is a block element now if you want to convert your block elements into one line what we learned in the flex is we change the property from block to display Got so it. let's do that now in order to target that we always target the parent container similar to what we did in the main uh, box right got it so we applied the flex always in the container so that all the child can follow the properties got it so let's let's select this box and this is our just go back to the diagram first mm -hmm. this is the first row of the column second column so we have second column and this is the first row and this is the container so let's add a id and i'm going to call this uh, profile container a profile header so because this is showing the header information by the way naming convention is subjective um, a lot of people use a different naming convention based on your peers how you design systems uh, there is a very common naming convention called bem if you are writing production ready css code you can definitely definitely check that out but for today's class we'll keep it simple and i'm going to just write names as as what we are writing it cool so we have created an id called profile header to target this box let's go to the head section this is the time to start writing css again what's the first rule we select the element mm -hmm. we are selecting it through the id so you will use hash and uh, the id name is profile header so let's write profile header and the first thing what we want to do is change the display property which is uh, display flex now ah, the okay. moment we did it like everything is now coming in the same line got it right? but i still see some alignment issues here exactly so this is where your uh, flex box froggy comes into the picture to ah. fix the alignment issues you know like you need to use properties like justify center space around space around time. align items so let's see like what exactly we need uh, if we again inspect it okay i have this element here and this element here um i want these two buttons first of all to be in center hmm. um vertically and we need more space and in between we need, this div yeah. and this and we div. need more space between this and this so yeah this is basically uh what we want now to add spacing between your flex element there is a property called gap let's use that first so let's use the gap property on the main container because we need uh, a gap between these two columns right right so to add this gap we use a gap gap property and let's add this say 10px okay okay yeah. nice looks better let's and do 20 let's try 20 okay yeah cool. better is better actually i am still not happy let's make it 25 cool so we have the space between these two and as you again hover over it you can see the gap right right I think a better way to do this is to make the hundred X engineers on top because there's more stuff coming here. Yeah. So this should be on top, and you should have a changed font and a changed typeface. Exactly. So that that's also one magic of Flexbox that the more elements you keep adding it, it will automatically fix the elements all together. But the thing is, you have to independently uh, adjust the size. So you have to assign the property on a row level. So if you apply the property to fix the styling of this row 
it will automatically take care of uh, the peers and the neighbors of this element. So let's just to explain this in in, the in practical, uh, let's do this. We have added gap in the first column. Let's add gap in the profile header as well. The moment we add gap, you can see, okay, we have like uh, added gaps. Yeah, but if you see in the Instagram, we have like more gap uh, between this and this uh, and the text is also smaller. So I'll add little more gap here, uh, say 35 pixels, right? Um, now we, we need to apply the property called justify content. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have uh, different uh, values here, center, but we, we have another property which is called align items. And the moment I'll do align items center, you can see ah. the follow buttons are now coming into the center. Got it. Now, but I want to make everything to the top. Oh, actually, that, that is not possible right now because this element is taking the entire height and width. So then to do that, let's reduce the size. Of yeah, that to, to do that, you have to reduce the size of this. So right now, if you hover over it, the cool part of this inspector tool is now it can show you all the property and values. Can you see? Yeah. H2 by default has this color and this font and this margin, mm -hmm. right? So if you want to change that, you can uh, target the H2 element. What's the selector for H2? Tell me. H2. H2. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how we select H2. And uh, here I want to add font. Cool. Let's start uh, styling it. So first we need to change the font size. Um, what should be the font size of this? Uh, 15, 16 pixels. And by the way, that's the, that's the worst way to add any property to CSS. Okay. This, this is called eyeballing. So a lot of times developer do this. They look at a design and they just uh, guess a value or a number. Okay. This could be 20 pixel, 30 pixel, but this is the worst uh, way to design any UI. Mm -hmm. The correct way is whenever you start writing code for any particular mockup or a file, you either use a design tool like Figma, Sketch uh, or Adobe XD and then map those values. But if you don't have access to Sketch, you can go to the website which you are cloning. In this case, we are cloning Instagram and your developer tool becomes your design, uh. Uh, your designer. So th then you can basically hover over and this is also the reverse engineering. Right now we are reverse engineering the UI of Instagram. So I'm putting my black hat on and I'm going to hack Instagram styling. Awesome. Just, just observe me how I do it. So I use this selector and because I want to select uh, this part, as we can see, this is still H2 element. So the right. element which we used, that was like perfect. Uh, okay. So our guess was like almost there, but we need to add few fonts and color. So as you can see, color is black, which is the same. The font here is, uh, as you can see, this is 20 PX. So let's add that first 20 PX. We know this is a value 20 PX. And the moment we add it, now it's looking somewhat similar size, Correct. right? And the next part in the font was, uh, the font family font family. You can see here it's written Apple system. So this is what I meant uh, when I use the Roboto font, right? So by default, it uses font from your system and, uh, so this has a very smart way of uh, developing UI. Like sometimes uh, SF Pro is not available on some certain PCs or some certain devices. So what uh, Instagram is doing, it is defining all the possible fonts which can exist on the browser. And if say, suppose your system font doesn't uh, has that SF Pro, mm -hmm. it will fall back to other fonts. Mm -hmm. Just to check like all, all the fonts or the list of fonts which Instagram applies will go here. We'll uh, select this and in this tab, in the style tab, filter, you can write font family. Okay. So the moment I write font family, you can see there are some variables. Now variables in CSS is a concept which I'll uh, not teach in this video because it's a slightly advanced concept, but it means like uh, you can put the values in a particular object and then you can use these values again and again without without you writing numbers and letters, right? Got it. So this is what they use. If we click on the font family system, this is the value of this variable. Can you read this? This is Apple system. So this is the preference they have written. So first they want, if somebody is using it from the Apple system, use the default system font because from Apple system, you can go to settings and change the font, right? So whatever font your OS is using, it will use that. Got that it. That's a smart way to engineer UI. 
and then like if it doesn't find that system font that's the next uh, font it should apply is the blink max system font so this is the apple font which we is which we is speaking about and if this also doesn't uh, exist in the newer oss so this font is not available so it goes back to the older font Got which it. is sego ui and if that also doesn't exist then it goes back to roboto which is like uh, your android font and in worst case if that also doesn't exist it has helvetica arial and sans serif so they have covered all the edge cases like it doesn't matter you are looking at this website from a uh, windows device or a linux device you will always uh, get a beautiful font nice right? so for now we don't need to apply all these things because i'm using uh, my apple system i can just copy paste that uh, second font and actually the blink mac yeah blink mac i can use this entire value if you actually want to copy the exact thing you can copy the whole font family also just do that font family and yeah so the moment i do it uh, you can see the font has changed ah, and now it's like looking very similar to the yes. instagram font it's probably here the weightage is like a yeah. little heavier on this exactly so that's our next property so we'll use font weight for that now again instead of we guessing the number of font weight i'll go back here and select this element and check sorry select this element and uh, check the font weight because now we know which property we need to apply so so this is the font weight 400 okay. so we're going to apply the same value 400 Perfect. And, and as you can see, uh, we applied everything by looking at the Instagram UI. Perfect. We can achieve exactly pixel perfect design. And this is can that we simple. move this a little above as well? Yeah. Uh, you want this to be above? Yeah. Okay. I am. Um, let's check. Okay, we have by default some margin, sixteen pixel. Okay, let's remove this margin. We'll write margin um, zero. So the moment we write margin zero, it will remove all the extra margin which is now applied. Perfect. So now it's very similar to this, mm. right? Yeah. So we are almost there. Um, now we got to build the rest of the elements. Yeah. Now, now uh, using the same approach, you can go back to your uh, layout exercise and start creating these rows and columns and add more boxes first. Then put your elements. because right now as you can see we only have text elements so far and at the end we have this hyperlink which we remember we spoke in the html class right that is so, the href ahref right yeah so do you just need to write these inside the boxes and arrange it using the flex and your how done. would i actually write it yeah all of you who are watching this this is your task now you have learned the concepts of layout and flex go give it a try this was match okay this was the first row Where this is the second row. Yeah, this is the second row. Just like add the comment over. This is a. This is not an H. Yeah, this is not an H. So they have used a button here, but you can use. Uh, a I can thing. use an H tag basically. You can you can use a H tag, but I don't recommend using H tag here because this is not a heading. So for that you can use p tag, p is Got a paragraph. It. So all the text element you can put inside paragraph if you are not uh, sure whether to use a heading or not. Eighty-eight posts. What is it? Eighty-four point eight k followers. Wow. If you haven't followed our Instagram page, guys, this is a good time to follow the Instagram page. Eighty-four point eight k followers. K is big, and finally, nine following. I wonder who those people are. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of them is me. <laughs> <laughs> If you want tips on coding and gym, follow Sadant. <laughs> okay, it's coming like this now. What I'm gonna do is I need to give an ID to this div. So. ID equals. Let's just write post stuff. That's what I'm gonna call it. Now I'm gonna go to styling and hashtag post stuff. Awesome. Display 
Flex. Whoa. All right. Gap. Let's try 40. 40 pixel. I think you missed the unit. Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Not bad. Pretty much there. Content. Center. Now it's center. Perfect. Should I do align items as well? So align item is for your vertical axis. In this case, everything is vertically centered, yeah. so you don't need it. Got it. Awesome. Now I want to stylize this thing. This is everything inside post stuff. Yeah. So, so use the same concept. Go to Instagram, inspect their elements, check the values which they are using. Got it. So you, you can maybe take a reference from the existing headings. We have used font size, font family, font weight. So it's font weight is 600. 600. Yeah. So font is that. pretty much the same. Font weight is 600. Okay. You can copy the same font family. Font family is the same thing as this. So I'm just going to copy this. Where is it? Oh my God. It's so hard to detect things. <laughs> CSS can get very messy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. It looks very, very, very similar. Exactly. But the alignment got a little screwed up. Yeah, because of the gap. I think gap you did like 40 pixels. You can reduce the gap. Let's go for 35. Yeah. Okay, yeah, much a little better. Yeah, a little better. Not the best. This this thing is not aligned. So let's try 30. Okay, much better. Mm. I think you can reduce the font size as well. Yeah. That will also help. Font size. Let's actually go here. This uh, is 14 pixel. 14. 1, 4 px. Awesome. Now I can increase the gap. Yeah. Perfect. It looks exactly like this. You are becoming a pixel perfect UI developer. Yes. Can I, can I get hired now? Yeah, you are actually very close. I can yeah. consider your application. <laughs> That's good enough. That's good enough. Okay, now let's quickly make this 100x engineers thing also. I'm going to make the entire thing. Yeah. So this is the third div. First rule, we're going to comment. Awesome. And here, let's see what kind of a thing is this. This is span. What's a span? So similar to div, we have another box which is called span. Okay. And the difference between div and span is div is a block element and span is an inline element. So span will not expand to your entire full width. So there, there are cases where only you need to specify a property uh, or there are cases when you, you need to add like emojis, which you're adding here, right? In this case, you don't want this container to take the entire width. Otherwise it will break the line and come in the second line. So to package everything in single line, you can think of it's like a mini box. So span is your mini box, which has a display property in line. So instead of div, should I write span? Uh, inside div, you can write span. Got it. Okay. So I'm going to write span and you can write the text here. Now inside this, I'm going to write hundred X engineers, which is exactly what we have over here. Awesome. I'm going to give this an ID and call it title. Is the, is the ID case sensitive? Uh, ID is not case sensitive, but uh, this is like a good practice if you just make it uh, everything in same case. Got it. Otherwise the developer will get confused. So I'm going to create this display. That's not needed, right? Yeah. So here like, uh, because not everywhere you need Flexbox, right? Because this is a very simple layout. Uh, so you can just apply the text formatting. Got it. So the it's 14 pixel yeah. and the font weight same. is 600. Yeah. So you can just copy paste the same style. Font weight is 600. And font family. Font family, which I'm just going to copy paste from here. Still, there's some alignment issues. Yeah. Should I adjust the gap over here to maybe 50? Okay, that helped a little bit, but not too much. So let's try 45. That's much better. Yeah. 
now it's starting to look pretty similar mm. awesome now we have the final box which is these three lines yeah so we're going to go to the last div over here and i'm going to name it fourth call actually i think uh, you have you should use row because these are rows uh, third row and fourth row ah okay third row fourth row and within this so you have some text elements i'm going to create three more divs and i'm going to call this description now within this a society of budding and elite coders yeah that is going to be paragraph yeah the society of budding and elite coders copy this paragraph and the next line would be check out srk voice clone tutorial if you guys haven't seen that video watch it over here check out srk voice clone tutorial and finally we have a link which is a href equals you don't need to add space yeah equals i'm going to copy this link and i'm going to paste it here yeah. um you have to close the a tag and ah also, also write it yeah because uh, you need to add some content inside the a tag so it's the same link basically same link. awesome now i'm going to go up and going to create a new hashtag called description i'm going to copy all of this and paste it here but these don't have that much font weightage it's slightly different so here It's fourteen pixel. What's the font weight? There's no no font weight. So there is a font weight, but this font weight is not getting applied here. Okay. So let's see what you can scroll down and see other values of font weight. So this means uh, it is not using any font weight. Got it. It's just normal text. Yeah, it's normal text. So you can just skip the font weight property. Got it. Awesome. Now, how do I reduce the distance between this? Is that padding? So, distance between these two things. Uh, also, there is one more property called line height. So, line height is uh, basically helps you to increase the distance of your uh, characters in one particular line. Got it. Let's try two pixels first. Okay, not bad. We were pretty close in the first try. Let's try four. Let's try five and lock it there. Awesome. Nice. Now all we need to do is increase the size of this logo. Yeah, and put it in center. Yes. Uh, so that logo is is your main container. container. Yeah. And we already have justify content, so you need to apply the align items here, which will center everything vertically as well. So align items. Center. Center. Whoa! You're done. Can we increase the size of this? Yeah. So right now the size is hundred pixel, hundred pixel in the image. You can see. Ah, oh, got it. You can increase that maybe to two hundred. Let's try hundred and fifty. Five hundred and fifty. I think we have it. Yeah. We just need to increase the gap between this. How yeah. do we do yeah. that? So you can add a margin right here in the image. That will also work. Ah, just add okay. a margin. Margin right? No, no, just add margins so because we want a equal margin. Got it. So let's do hundred. Hundred. Actually, hundred will be too much. Let's try hundred. Okay. So it's a little too much. A little too much. Uh, let's try sixty. Wow, this is this is perfect. This is looking perfectly. Uh, this no, nobody is can tell perfect. This is like a different UI. <laughs> yes, this is perfect as Instagram. So we've basically fifty percent there. All we need to do right now is to make this highlight thing, which I'm assuming is very similar to making yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. And finally, the grid, which is the last part. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Let's go and do that. Cool. All right. So I'll do a quick recap, and if I go wrong somewhere, you can correct me. Sure. So initially, we started off with certain HTML tags. Uh, HTML gives 
the skeleton, the framework to the entire website and CSS is for styling or the clothing or the design related things. In HTML, we learned a bunch of tags, especially the H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6. Uh, then there's the P tag, which is the paragraph tag. Then an important tag was Ahref, which connects different sites to each other. After that, we learned about divs, which is uh, like a box. And there was span, which is like a smaller box within a div. So just one more uh, thing to add here, like div is a block element. So there's a display property by default, which div has its block. And that means it takes the entire width on the page. Okay. And wherever you don't want something like that, you want a smaller box, you use span. Got which it. doesn't take the entire width. Div is like this and span is like... Yeah, that's why div is known as a block element. Span is known as inline element because span can fit in the line. Got it. Makes yeah. sense. And then we made a button. Uh, that's another tag that we learned. Other than that, uh, we got into CSS. CSS is usually written inside uh, the header. We use a tag called style. All the CSS comes within the style. We have to name every element uh, in the HTML part using an ID so that we can recall it in the CSS elements. Uh, we had this thing called border radius, which can make things circular or slightly curved. And there are a lot of other things like font weight, font size, font family, font color, button color, all that, etc., etc. And we also had a bunch of things related to flex which is essentially how things are spaced. Flexing is like uh, there's horizontal flexing and there's vertical flexing. And these are breaking down your entire UI into the smallest elements so that you can start building these out and spacing these out individually. And uh, there are a bunch of commands for flexing, right? Like uh, space around, space between, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, yeah, I think I covered yep. everything. Yep, just to, I think, uh, give a recap, I'll just add a few things. It's like CSS, I told you, it's like all about three things, selectors, properties, values. So we spoke about selectors, so selecting by an ID. That's like a one way to select. You can also select by just calling the tag name. If you're selecting button, you can just write button and it will target all the buttons. But if you want a particular button which you only want to target, you can add an ID there. Similar to this, we have one more thing called class where you want to group similar kind of uh, buttons. So suppose you have like two buttons which has similar styles, but then you have third button, which is like a different style. So if you want to group these two buttons, instead of using ID, you can use class. So which is very similar in the behavior. It's just like a naming convention uh, for developers and for uh, uh, the browser that uh, class means that this identifier can have multiple uh, elements. Or, or otherwise, uh, ID is only for specific or one element. Yeah. Got it. Awesome. Cool. So now we've built this. I, I feel very proud of when I, whenever I look at this. It's, it's amazing. It's so photo, like not photorealistic. It's like a photo stat yeah, of like Instagram. Pixel perfect. We call it yes. pixel perfect design. Pixel perfect design. So there's one highlight that we have called AI in India. I have no idea why that exists. <laughs> we, do, we don't do anything in that thing. I'm going to get this deleted. You know, I'm actually going to go to the 100x Instagram account yeah. and delete this right now. Yeah, because then okay, have... refresh the page. Ta da! Yeah. <laughs> Problem solved. Nice, nice. Awesome. So I think that leaves us with only one more thing to build, which is the grid. Yeah. And, and I think that's a classic uh, flex element. Exactly. You are getting there, my friend. You're already becoming the UI engineer. It's like, awesome. So, How do we do that? Guide me, sensei. So again, like the same philosophy, we, what we did for the profile section, mm -hmm. let's take a screenshot again. So if you notice uh, closely, we have two things here. One is the Instagram grid, which has like three uh, so images like or three posts, okay, yeah. three posts per row. And just above that, we have these three buttons. Hmm. So these buttons basically change your uh, view, view right? Like if you, you want to look at post, you can click on air reels and other things, right? Mm -hmm. so, so we'll divide these into two parts. So first we will build the buttons. Actually, you tell me, what do you want to build first? The buttons or the grid? Let's build the buttons first because I already know that. Cool. So cool. the first comes, there's a line that I yeah. see. So first the line. So let's let's do this thing again. Uh, we'll do the layout exercise. We'll just because we are building this part only. I'll take a screenshot of this, and uh, I'll go to my whiteboard again. Put this image here, 
and now I can start drawing the same boxes. So as you can see, this is the main. Uh, but there's a line as well, right? There's a line as well. I'll just cover the line also. Yeah. So this is one uh, row. And in this row, we have uh, three elements. Now tell me if I'm making any mistake. I think you're making a mistake here. Oh, correct me. I think the line should be one box and then post reels and tags should be another box, which is inside a bigger box. Actually, you are right. We, we can definitely do that. But the reason I didn't include it uh, like that, it's because uh, this becomes very difficult for us to build the layout then because then we have to again introduce one more row here. So this is the shortcut. This is like a hack, which I'm going to tell you. Okay. Um, I love hacks. So like instead of, so whenever you see any horizontal line in any website, so there are like different ways to do that. In earlier days, we used to use a tag called HR tag, which is, uh, which stands for horizontal ruler tag. But uh, since we are now like uh, writing code for CSS, if you imagine closely this entire thing, um, yeah, this, if I draw a box, just uh, for this line, let's say, yeah. Can you tell uh, whether it's a line or it's a box? I mean, now it's a box. Yeah. So, and this box has a border. Yes. And if we remove these all borders and we just keep the top border, oh. we'll, we'll get something like this. So this, is, this is the hack. So instead of you creating one more element, you will just use the same box, which you anyway creates. I think something like this requires a little bit of creative thinking. Exactly. Yeah. So this is, this is your optimizing now code. You're thinking about in that terms, instead of you introducing one more box or one more element, mm -hmm. you can you just reuse the existing elements Perfect. and remove the other uh, borders and just keep the border top. Awesome. So that is what that. we're going to do that. So now we have the layout ready. So let's create, let's create a box and yep. uh, we'll create like a, three elements in it. Awesome. Cool. So let's move on to here. So we'll call this uh, tabs. Okay. Because this, these are like very it's pretty simple. much like uh, it's tabs. Yeah, it's like a tab. Tabs. So now as we have the diagram with us, we'll just create how many boxes? Three boxes. Three boxes. So we have one there. This will be having our posts. And then the second one will be having our uh, reels. And the last one will have our tagged. Yeah. Don't we have to put the P sign to yeah. have text? Yeah. So that's also like one thing. Uh, good practice is something which he just mentioned. Always put a, a relevant tag. Right now, I'm not putting any tag, uh, but uh, let's add P here. Yeah, and we need that in all caps. Yeah, we need it in all caps. Now, how do we get these icons? That's a good question. So icons will bring us to a uh, next topic, which is assets in web development. So there are images and then there are uh, some assets. As image also can be classified as an asset, but uh, other examples of asset is like these icons. And uh, the reason why these are different from images is because so they can be an uh, emoji, they can be a character, or they can be an SVG. Do you know the full form of SVG? No. Even I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's ask Chat GPT. Let's GPT. Add icons in HTML CSS. Image icons. Use the tag IMG to add an icon image file. SVG icon. Yeah. So these are three ways so uh, which GPT gave us. Uh, there are icon libraries. Yeah, there are icon libraries. Actually, there are like more. So as I mentioned, like Unicode is basically your emojis. So every emoji has a character code. Um, oh, okay. So like that's why because you can see emojis on your phone as well as your window mm -hmm. because these are actually characters which are uh, converted by your browser and your phone. To a, to a certain looking image emoji. Got it. So yeah, so that is one way. Then we have uh, icon libraries, which are like uh, similar to how we added font. So you can install a library either from CDN or uh, you can download it. And other, another very common way is uh, either use as an image or use an SVG. 
now uh, the full form of S- svg here is scalable vector graphics and the cool part about svg is it's the most optimized version of image you can get so it's different from image because it's actually uh, a code it's not like uh, your uh, png or jpg file if you look at this so this is how uh, you can represent an svg just like an html tag you can give it a width height and this gives us to another domain which is like uh, illustration design right so you can like design any instruction and any you can design any illustration by just writing a code like that oh interesting so that's like a whole new domain so we might not get to there but uh, this is like good to know that svgs are the like most optimized version for web development because this is unlike unlike the images these are actual code values which somebody has written to generate an image or icon mm. so we're going to use uh, svg for our case now to get these icons so uh, we're going to again hack the instagram Mm-hmm. will reverse engineer so as we know now one way to use icons is like svg so if i hover over this particular icon here you can see this is an svg code so ah. exactly same thing what we uh, saw on the uh, chat gpt now i can just copy this by clicking on this copy element and i can paste it uh, here and the moment i do it you can see a nice little icon perfect right so now you can see look there's like so many lines of code here uh, somebody has written to generate this image so that's also like a, a cool new uh, thing which we learned today like not only you can build web pages from html you can also build images and illustrations like that so yeah uh, i'm going to just like uh, do this for other svgs as well i'll just hover over reels copy this and paste it for reels oh we got a reels and then the last one is tag so we we got all the icons ready now uh, let's arrange these boxes into vertical layout yeah and change the fonts and all that yeah so We, I have already given the ID tabs. Yeah. Let's go to a CSS section. Um, and actually, I just want to clean up the CSS a little bit. So I'll I'll start writing comments as well as on CSS. So I'll say this CSS is for grid tabs, and I'll comment this. The same shortcut you can use: command slash. And this is how you add comments in CSS: just mm-hmm. slash star and star slash. So this will tell us okay, this section is about the grid tabs. So let's select uh, again. Coming to the important uh, three factors: selectors, properties, and values. We'll select it by using ID. ID was tabs. Okay. Yeah. yeah, ID was tabs. And so first thing we need to do is display flex. So the moment we do it, we can turn it into a vertical layout. Now we do align center. Yeah. Now we need to make it center. So let's make it first center by giving this property. Okay, that's also done. We and let's add some gap here. Um, say twenty pixel. Okay, now we have some gap. I'll say add little more gap. Say forty pixel. Perfect. This is looking yeah, close. Oh, font. Yeah. Now let's add the font. So we already have font here. Um, I'll just like recheck again. So they are using the same font, but the font size is twelve pixel. And uh, let me check the font weight as well. Font uh, weight. So font weight is six uh, hundred. Semi bold they are using. And the color is also. Yeah. So color is different here. Yeah. So if I just uh, search for color here, uh, the color is actually this color, which is transparent. And the cool part is. i can just copy this hex value awesome yeah so let's start by adding font family and font size actually i'll just copy this part and paste it here so font, font size is 14 sorry 12 14 it was 12 12 yeah it was 12 pixel yeah and the weight is 600 weight is 600 Okay, so now we have color. Get, awesome, it's kind of looking pretty similar. And we have the color. Let's just check. Let's go to image. 
so the reason why i i actually like went to this thing and this is little different format i think we spoke about the rgb correct so we'll just copy this value if you are like copying if you are following along with me you can do this thing uh, you can write rgb and instead of this var you can just like put the value because this variable is just putting the value inside the code correct so the value is 115 115 120 do you know what these values mean see the variation of the red exactly so this is the value of red this is the value of green this is the value of blue and this rgb function will give us the color by mixing all these value so let's write rgb this is like classic way how you write color and the moment we do it you can see okay Perfect. We, we got the exact color, exact font size, and exact font weight. Now all that's missing is the line. Exactly. This is where the optimization comes come into yes. the picture, right? So now we let's start this. I'll show you a trick uh, how to design this. I can add a border, and uh, so the border pro property has uh, uh, can take different values uh, instead of you passing only one value. So far we have seen. we only pass uh, one value per property but uh, in border property you can add uh, this 1px so this is how it works so we'll write border and the way border works is little different so i want to introduce so uh, here the mdn docs so let's go to uh, mdn and see border so these are the ways you can add border so border has this thing called shorthand css property so this you can uh, look at other properties as well if you remember in margin we gave two values right that was like vertical margin and the uh, horizontal margin so this means you can use a shortcut in uh, instead of you writing margin right margin left 2020 /20, so you can just write in one line margin is equals to 1010 /10. and the first value will always take the horizontal another value will take the vertical got it yeah other the same so similar to that border has these values the first value is border width Mm -hmm. second value is border style and the third value is border color so when we say border width is like the how thick you want the border to be so this will always be in pixels and uh, the second one is the border style so border can have different style like it it can have solid style which is like your regular border then it has dash style so this you're looking at the mdn docs is like a dashed border and then you have like uh, double and other things most in most of the cases you don't need to go in this much detail but i'm telling you so that you are aware okay tomorrow if you want to introduce a new type of border you can do that mm. cool so now we know like we use like three things here in this border property so i'm going to write first first one is border width let's add a 1px thick border and uh, the style i want it to be solid and border color um so for now let's take black i'll take a reference from the instagram after this but let me just show this Got so it. right now it looks little similar to uh, what we drew in the whiteboard mm -hmm. now the time is to basically remove all the remaining borders mm. for that we have a, a border property we'll just change this from border to border top and the moment i do it ah, you can see it perfect it's only applying to the top of the border perfect yeah uh now let's go to instagram again a little bit of a grayish color yeah i'll just like uh, change this so even they have done it in a similar way so uh, they they have like uh, so made instagram's hacky yeah your instagram has done this so they have did this border top with 1px and border top style is solid it's nice. the same thing what we gave and let's see if they have border color Okay, border top color is there, and this is again RGB value. So we'll copy this, mm -hmm. and uh, instead of giving black, we'll just write RGB brackets and this. Perfect. So this is looking now exactly like yes. the Instagram, right? So I can awesome. like zoom in. We're so in. close. I think sure. we're left with last element. Yeah, yeah, we are with the last element, which is the post. Okay, so now we are almost there, and said. This is the ultimate test for you. Just oh, what do I have is, to do? This is a chance for you to prove whether you can be a hundred X engineer or not. Oh my God, my reputation is on the line. Exactly. So we have built everything, and the last part is the image grid here. So using all the concepts what we have learned, you have to build this grid, and uh, I'm gonna basically test you here. Okay. Wow. Okay. 
let's see let's see okay i'm going to think out loud so this is essentially flexus i have to this is like both horizontal and vertical so i have to basically make uh, i'm just going to do it for yeah you two, can you can do it them. you can do it like you can even do it like one by one you can pick one row first yeah so i'll do i'll do the first row first so i'm just like you did it i'm going to do this activity of taking a screenshot and then going here pasting the screenshot over here and then i'm going to use this tool this is going to be one box this is going to be i think in box. this example is pretty evident <laughs> yeah it's it's very evident yeah. i think i'm just yeah i'm not going to draw for the boxes because <laughs> yeah. it it is a box yeah so uh i'm going to go all the way here now we have written a lot of code you've done a lot of code and after the last div wait this is the no everything should be in a parent div no so here we haven't like any specified anything like that so we are like creating a new div for every section okay this is on, this is only the grid tab div yeah, okay yeah. got it perfect so you can create a new div all right so this is going to be the parent div i'm going to give it an id it's going to be called posts and that's about it now within this i'm going to have three things or i can actually do two more divs within this main div and give it all the same properties i think that seems like the better way to do yeah. it perfect now within this there's going to be three divs awesome and within each div i'm going to put an image yeah and you know for image which tag we use img exactly so where do we get these images should i just screenshot it let's actually just take screenshots and we're done okay so to upload the images we are uh, hosting around notion just like we did for the 100x logo uh so we're creating a notion page over here and sid's going to upload all the six images over here and every image will have an individual link which is going to go on the html page ta da I'll just copy this link. My my bad. I made the made it under private Notion page, <laughs> so it was not able to access the files. Dev okay, problems, now, guys. Finally, <laughs> yeah, this is how you deeper. Oh, but it's coming in a circle. Yeah, the reason why it's coming to circle because I told you to observe this bug, which I've mentioned while writing code oh, for. Oh, we. Okay, let me. I think it's because we set the border radius of all the images. Yes. Exactly. This this was the bug which I was uh, I was referring to. If you guys are able to like detect this bug, congratulations, you guys are. I see it. True hackers. Comment down. I see it. So yeah. Now tell me what do we do to um, fix this? I think we need to create a new image ID and put uh, all the attributes of. the grid thing in that id exactly let's do that awesome so i should uh, do this like this image id equals uh grid that's it awesome so one a better name i think could be grid image grid hyphen image okay grid hyphen image yeah okay now i'm going to copy this uh now let's go to the next div hmm. which is the next image now i'm going to go to instagram the next one is amitabh bachchan so where is that image i'm going to go here the original copy link no view original view original this will redirect you to the ah uh, okay image i'm going to copy this and i'm going to change the name of sorry i mean the link of the image control v awesome we're going to fix the grid part soon uh the next image is iron man so let's go here view original let's click on the link let's clean our browser because i hate messy browsers and i'm going to go here img 
id equals grid image you can toggle this screen because you don't need this pane right now this one just click on this file icon yeah okay so it will give you more Perfect. area src equals this just close that also angle brackets and i'm going to click enter forward slash close yeah. that awesome now what i'm going to do is i'm going to make this into proper formats so i'm going to go here where is the img i'm going to write it right next to it grid image yeah but we have used the id selector so for our ids we use hashtag ah my bad yeah grid image why am i getting this right now this complete i think because css is broken right now because you just wrote okay. incomplete statement perfect got it okay now what i'm going to do is the flex thing so let's do display flex after that i'm going to do why is it not coming okay let's debug this go back to your html are you applying flex to the right element i think you're applying flex to all the images okay so you have to apply oh, flex on the container yes so i should have done it in post yeah okay got it got it so i think for the image what i need to do is not display flex what i need to do is border radius yeah so border radius is going to be zero i guess yeah okay now we have the posts now i'm going to do image size see size for size you can directly use height and width okay as we also saw in the icon right height is going to be you can take a reference from the existing image properties like in the in this we have mentioned got it so this one is 150 so it has to be slightly bigger so i'm going to go for 250 uh, i'm going to mm. a little bigger let's go 350 i think that will be little more bigger yeah it's too big no it's too big yeah 300 Three hundred will be, yeah. Yeah, I think this is perfect. I think a little smaller should do. So a lot of trial and error. Yeah. Let's do two seventy. And if you don't want to do this, you can directly go and hack it from Instagram. Hack Instagram. <laughs> awesome. So this is sorted. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another parameter, which is hashtag grid. Now I'm going to do display flex. Are you using the right name? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, posts. Posts. That's yeah. the name. Yeah, these kind of issues can happen. Posts. No, is it post? It's not happening. Let's debug this. What's happening here? So let's go down. the the way i debug usually is with the chrome inspector i'll do inspect here and check the properties so we have this div okay uh, the parent of this div has only one div see this is the problem and even if it is making it flex but there are no more child and that's also like one important thing to notice in flex flex properties are only applicable for its immediate children which means ah. like you 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 cannot like uh, have the nested flex if you apply on the top level container. so i don't really need this div yeah, basically so you have created one extra div container you can just remove that and everything ideally should work got it this is the one right yeah you can do any one yeah i can do any one yeah and as you're doing this uh, it already worked it awesome. already like started working now i just need to do the spacing yeah which is uh let me see where is it display okay now i want to align it to the center so i'm going to use justify so ju wanna... just just going back uh, I think the reason why you created two one div is because you are creating rows. So right. the mental model here was kind of we got confused there. 
uh-huh. we thought of building the rows but then we ended up building columns first right padding i think the issue over here is everything has margin everything has a lot of margin so i don't think gap is the issue so let's first play around with margin let's set it to 5 pixel try that hmm let's try hover overing that i think now uh, click on this yeah let's see here what all properties are there border radius is zero margin so is 60 have, margin you have 60 pixel and this margin is coming from the, the image. image okay so now i have to go to the grid image yeah and edit the margin yeah Wow! Now it's working. That was instant. Wow! Amazing. It's looking so very five similar. Five pixels is a little too much. Let's go with three. Now it's picture perfect. Oh, wow! Beautiful. You have debugged also. That's <laughs> nice. I'm on my way. I'm telling you. Yeah. It's not AI that's going to take all the jobs. It's me. <laughs> And this is quite fast. Like uh, I think here uh, you need you deserve an appreciation. Thank you. So. Yeah, this is like quite fast. You learned everything. Very yeah. validating to hear that from someone who's been coding <laughs> for over ten years. Yeah, right. I'm gonna copy paste the same thing. I'm gonna give this also an ID, which is posts, because I wanted to have the same property. But I think you are mixing divs here, so this is also a common problem which happens. How am I mixing divs? So. Oh, okay. So, so just stick, just... just stick to the first layout approach. uh you have completed the first row okay now it's time to create another row so let's see where your post ends where is your post ending so this is dev id post it is yeah. ending over here which means i need to create under this yeah Wait, so let's don't, do don't, it don't don't delete that one i mean it, we can recreate it so div this is a new one yeah right and here i'm going to add an id equals what was it this will be your second row posts actually now you can copy paste the entire block the this entire post block you yeah. can copy and just paste it again here no this yeah you could have like copied the entire including post also but it's okay oh yeah actually but it's coming like that um because we haven't like mentioned the layouting here or oh, then i'd rather than i'll create yeah. a new id yeah, because create a new everything selector. is a horizontal layout got it right so now. let's call it posts 2 yeah okay and now let's post all this and i'll figure that out later here we have ai school 3d dreams and this heart thingy so i'm going to go to ai school now i have to create the same thing again uh i think i made a mistake in the approach all year you know if i make another thing within the same div it is going to give me everything in the same row because that's the property we applied if you want to make it lower because everything is like horizontally uh, yeah layout so i have to create another nesting of this div essentially i so, think you should go back to the whiteboard and just look at what did you miss and then maybe you can come back and refer here So what I missed was there's one div over here, there's one div that's containing three of these, and there's another div that's containing three of these, and that parent div yeah, has all the properties. Exactly. So, so the parent div has the vertical layout. It hmm. is containing two rows. So for that, what I need to do is copy this entire thing. Uh, just copy this. I think you already have a div, which is a parent. So right here. Now, so essentially, we're creating these things into one big thing. Yeah. So the thing is, he if you look at here, the line number three forty three. So this already has like one row. You mm. now need to create another row. Which you, if you copy this, ah, it okay. will create another row. Perfect. Yeah. So awesome. Now, then by default, because uh, it doesn't have any flex value. so it's coming here got it like this now let's just copy the images
Whew. Are you ready, Sid? Are you ready crossed. to see my work of art? Ooh la la. Sis. Isn't that amazing? This is very, very similar. It's like almost there. I think you just, uh, because we have introduced margin everywhere. So yeah. it's adding the margin um, of top and bottom. Oh, yeah. So, so I think we need to edit that. Yeah. So we're going to go back. And to just, just include a margin horizontal and, uh, so, sorry, margin left. All right. So instead of this, I'm going to write margin. margin left. Oh, that's changed. Oh, that's for the image thing. Okay. I was not supposed to yeah. mess with that. It's for grid image. Actually, actually let, let's inspect first. What's the problem? Because I feel maybe gap can be another issue. Can you inspect this? Let's do it. We need to identify why this gap is coming. The extra gap. Again, like select this. Yeah. So we just remove the five pixel margin from the post thing. And then now, now it looks pretty accurate. Yeah. Almost same. Almost same. And I, I, I think this will pass. Yeah, this will definitely pass. Awesome. We just built an Instagram clone via learning HTML and CSS. I feel pretty confident about HTML and CSS. So thank you for the amazing lesson over here. And I'm, if you guys liked it, let us know in the comments and subscribe to 100x. What next, Sid? What next in our journey of coding? Actually, you took too long. So, okay. I, wanna, I, I thought I was doing a pretty good job. No, I think you could do even better. I want to introduce you to a very smart intern. He can write code in seconds. In Which, seconds, an intern. You want to look at a demo? Sure. Is this intern like a bot or something? Let's, let's take a look. Okay. So, I'm going to take a screenshot mm -hmm. and uh, give it to my smart intern. GPT, that's a small intern. Yeah. Okay. And I'll just like say a line, right? HTML, CSS. No way. For this. No way, dude. And let's see. No way. No way this is working. Let's see. Yeah, I've, I've seen GPT write code, but I want to actually run this and see if it's actually going to happen. If that happens, I'm going to be very impressed. If that happens, I'm going to be scared. <laughs> Damn, this is really cool. Yeah. Okay, let's run this. Let's run yeah. this. Is GPT better than me? Hell no. So, I'll create a, I'll create a different file. Yeah, that? different file. I'll create a different file. Say this is GPT index.html. And, uh, oh, I'll paste this code here. And we need to paste. CSS this under, under style, style, section. style section. Let's just see. It's done. So it's already, I think, saying something. Okay, let's run this. Damn, okay, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Okay, that's that's not the best output, but that's still pretty impressive. That's yeah. still pretty impressive. Oh my God, it actually got the buttons. Yeah. It got the buttons. It got the it got <laughs> it got the link as well. The exact it link. got the exact how oh my god, it actually scanned yeah, the alphabets and oh sh this is so and cool. And this is like exactly flex. If you take a look, they have also so GPD also used the flex and the almost same properties. Yeah, what you yeah. use. It's just like a little bit polishing is like missing yes, here. Yes, definitely. Yeah, because like GPT is like still learning. But from a screenshot within yeah. seconds, getting this output, that is insane. So I'm going to show you like a technique because uh, that's like one thing with GPT. If you give everything uh, in a screenshot, if you, if you take like a bigger screenshot of the entire app, it will not perform better. Let's try this experiment to only for say these follow buttons. Right? Mm -hmm. Let's uh, take a screenshot of this. And uh, instead of giving the whole thing, ask it to write HTML, CSS for this. And let's see. Okay. If it gets a styling right over here, I'll be very impressed. It's writing that good border. code. It's also mentioning, see, Font like this size. is a black border. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's, like it's like writing comments for you, for humans. <laughs> See, computer writing comments for human.
<laughs> this is the ultimate programming all right let's run this let's go and uh, instead of this i'll paste this this is our devs do that looks exactly like the instagram button exactly that is insane like it's it's amazing how you, when you just do these small atomic elements it actually gets the code yeah. right down to the nail yeah exactly i can totally see this changing people's workflows in uh, like the product in the dev yeah. space so like imagine like what all you did in this last uh, few <laughs> yeah few minutes makes me feel very incompetent hours. like i yeah. i was honestly like feeling very proud about myself but <laughs> i saw this and i'm like damn okay if you guys want us to do a tutorial on this on gpt vision on how you as a ui developer or a front end engineer or a product designer can actually end up using this in your day to day life and more things that you can explore with the image importing feature of gpt let us know in the comments and we'll do that video next and until next time thank you for watching this thank you for staying with us thank you for teaching me sidant and teaching thank everyone you. who's watching this video if you liked what you're seeing hit the subscribe button hit the like button and until next time follow 100x